Hey guys, welcome to Juniority. My name is Mona and today I have an amazing guest for you guys with a special announcement. So make sure you watch till the end. Our guest today is 14 year old ice cream connoisseur, Bo Shell from Athens, Georgia. Bo, how are you? I'm doing good. How about you, Miss Mona? I'm doing fantastic. It's good to finally have you on the show. Thank you. I'm really happy to be here. Thank you. So tell me the story behind your business, Little Ice Cream Dudes. So my business started way back in 2012 when I asked my mom for an ice cream cart as an eighth birthday present. So I wanted to make my own money and I told my mom that. And at first she didn't take me seriously. But after asking and begging and pleading for a long time, she finally gave in and got me an ice cream cart for my eighth birthday. And I so tell me a little bit about the ice cream. Do you make it from scratch or do you resell ice cream? So I get my ice cream from the distributor and I resell it as for now. But soon when I open my ice cream shop, I'll start making my own ice cream because in my county, you have to make sure you're in a commercial kitchen. So you can't make homemade ice cream. But when I get the ice cream shop, of course, I'm going to keep making my own ice cream and finally try to start, you know, making my own ice cream as in a line of ice cream and distribute it to other vendors. Beautiful. And do you plan to have like some secret recipes, special recipes? What are your uh, thoughts or what are your plans on that? I'll just say it has to stay a secret for now. Okay. But I'm telling you, it's going to be real good. It's going to be real good. Okay. So let's talk about the book because you did such an amazing job uh, going through the journey of your business and talking about how you uh, asked your parents for the ice cream cart for your birthday. Tell me, what was the process like writing this book with your mom, collaborating? Because it looks amazing and you did such a fantastic job telling your story. Writing the book, just starting at the beginning when we started, it took us a little bit of time to write it because we had to make sure we did it over and over again with each draft so it was easy to read for everyone. And I also wanted to make sure it was a children's book because I wanted to make sure everyone could read it. And so going on after that, we had to find an illustrator. So we looked online and we found a few different illustrators and we gave them a picture of me and we chose the person whoever best captured me. And so it was Starvos Pierce and he's the one who did all the illustrations. So I'm very thankful for that as well. And then after that, it was just a matter of finding out how we could self-publish because we couldn't really afford any other kind of publishers and also finding out where we could get the book or how we could sell it. So it was a long process. It took about a few years over the making, um, but we're finally doing it now. And we have a great illustrator in Athens, so it's a locally owned publisher and everything. We publish ourselves and we're self-publishing and we're also making sure we're supporting the community. That's fantastic. And I also love how you uh, geared it towards youth entrepreneurship because there's a lot of things that along the way, vocabularies that you explain. Uh, whose idea was that? So the Popsicle Six and all the vocabulary was my idea. I came up with that after seeing it before. So I took my own inspiration and I said, Mom, I want to put Popsicle Six to explain words the children may not know. So they can keep reading and instead of having to go in the back of a glossary or stop on Google to look it up. So they can keep reading and have more fun and stay involved in the story. And that was just me because I want to make sure if I'm really interested in a story that I won't have to stop and slow down momentum or slow down the feeling that I already had. Fantastic. So, That's yeah. a brilliant idea. Um, so tell me, you went from doing three events your first year to 28 events your second year of business. How were you able to quickly scale uh, your business? So I scaled my business um, in that second year by joining the Chamber of Commerce in the Athens area. By, so I really focused on networking that next year, even though I didn't know it. I asked my mom I needed to get more events because recently after like coming into that second season, I had pneumonia. So my mom wouldn't think I want to do it anymore. So I told her that I needed to get more events. I need more gigs, mom. And she really responded to that. And so we went to the Athens Area Chamber of Commerce. And I joined the area of Chamber of Commerce for free. I met the president, Doc Eldridge. And he was really nice to me after we had a really good talk, too. 
So in 2014, you were invited to the International Association of Ice Cream Distributors to speak at their annual convention in Orlando, Florida. Uh, what was that experience like for you and what did you talk about? The experience was mostly for me, really just like seeing that I'm not alone, kind of, or I'm not the only one. And even though there wasn't a lot of younger people, I still got to make people in my industry and I also got to learn a lot about the industry. Um, and I spoke about, if I can remember, I spoke about just talking about how far I've come and just different things in the ice cream community that we've seen so far. But also they made you an honorary uh, member and awarded you $5,000 worth of ice cream while you were there. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> what was that like for you? So me being me, I asked a really inconsiderate question, but I still find it to be a humbling moment because even though I didn't know at that time, he gave me $5,000 worth of ice cream. So that really helped us move on. And I asked like, is that in money or is like, how much is that equal to? But I really now appreciate it and just moving forward. And that for me is just showing that I've come a little ways and I'm always able to be humble because I just have to make sure I know what I'm doing and know how I'm representing myself and not asking dumb questions like that. That's okay, but you're learning in the process, you know, and the best way to learn is making mistakes, right? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so tell me about your relationship with C. Nelson Company, which specializes in refrigerator manufacturing. So our relationship with them, they've been always kind of helpful to us and they've always given us carts, even with, um, just them giving me carts by just getting good grades in a school year, that was really helpful for our business. And they gave us really free carts and they're also helping us supply with the shop as well. So they've been, they've been really helping me. So you have worked large events such as uh, Funk Fest Atlanta and the Atlanta Ice Cream Festival, Taco Festival, Atlanta Street Food and music festivals. How are you able to secure these events? So I get these events by really just looking up with different types of events in Atlanta. And we already know that Atlanta is a big city. So I make sure I contact them and see how much it is because usually it's a vendor fee to get in there. And it's also about being early or how much you know around the community. But we just been looking around and making sure that we can get to, into these events too because a lot of the events and carts are just like us, so we want to make sure that I'm able to get there. That's beautiful. In 2017 alone, your highest grossing year, you made $42,000, and in just six years of being in business, you have made over $120,000 and raised $20,000 towards opening your first ice cream store. How are you able to do this? I will be honest, most of it is faith, but it's also just working hard every day in each season, making sure we're selling and selling because most of the time it's just, we need money and the business has to survive. And even after that, I have to recognize, like I really recognize that my business is really kind of maxed out at where I am and I need to keep going and get a bigger place because my mom told me, if I stay complacent or if I stay in one place, someone else is going to come up and go past me. So I have to keep making sure that I'm still going so I don't get past and stay competitive in that sense. And so really it's just the shop has really been coming. Like it's been waiting to get here. So I had to make sure that I took my opportunity when I did. And I started a crowdfunding campaign because that's the only way I really knew how to raise capital. And I personally don't really like doing a lot of investments like or doing loans to be exact, just doing loans or any kind of investment because I wanna make sure I'm not really in debt. That's just a me personal thing. I don't like being in debt and I feel like I'm not too confident, but now I am, but just thinking back, I wasn't really too confident as I reflect. Wonderful. You were also named distinguished panelist for the King Centennial Speak panel commemorating the 50th anniversary of the assassination of Dr. King Jr. Tell me more about the event and what your experience was like. So that was really a really good kind of event for me personally because I like history and so does my mom. So we were really enjoying that, all that black history. 
but it was a really fun event. I liked the way how they made it all centered around kids, so it wasn't that nervous for me at least. And then also they gave me, like they were really graceful and gave us the questions already and everything. So I had really wrote up as much as I could about what I was gonna say. And I was really prepared for what they were gonna ask. And I really did my best. And I also got to enjoy all the other different kind of events and activities they had. They had like drumline over there and they also allowed me to have my ice cream too. So it was really fun. So in June of 2018, uh, the United States Cham Chamber of Commerce named you 2018 Young Entrepreneur Business of the Year. What did that mean to you and your business? It really gave me like a big boost in confidence as far as I could like tell at the first moment. And when I kind of realized it was very inspiring to know that they choose me because I personally don't think much of myself. I try to stay humble is what I'm trying to say. But I usually, I just wasn't really expecting it. It was really kind of nervous moment. So it really made me feel that I'm doing really good in my, with, our, with my business because I've just been working so long. And recently that year, it was kind of a comeback event, you could say, because recently that year I also entered into another Entrepreneurship of the Year Award for Black Enterprise. And so I didn't win that one, but this one kind of gave me confidence and it gave me a really settling kind of mood. And I was really happy for that. That's phenomenal. And you're you're a fantastic uh, young man, so you should you should definitely think good things of yourself. <laughs> so in your biggest gesture of generosity towards your community, you raised over five thousand dollars to take a hundred STEM loving girls to a special screening of a wrinkle in time. Not only that, but you also treated these fourth to eighth grade girls with a copy of the book, a t-shirt, dinner, dessert, and of course ice cream. Why did you do that and what did that feel like for you? So the main reason was because I wanted to give back to my community and I always liked to. And then my friend Taylor Richardson, I met her at another panel in Wisconsin for American Family Insurance. And so she was taking children to see A Wrinkle in Time for a thousand girls and she challenged her friends to do the same. And so I did 100 for myself and I looked up and I found Cine, which is the local Athens uh, downtown Cine theater. So we, uh, we went there and so we got everything set up and we asked all people around our community to send their select few of people who they believe would enjoy it. And so I had a really nice time and I did my best to really give all the girls a really fun time and enjoy the movie. That's beautiful. I love it. You've been in the business for such a long time. You have a lot of experience. What would you say to young entrepreneurs that w would like to start a business? I would definitely say do something that you love and make out whatever passion is yours because I feel like the people who do it the best are people who enjoy what they're doing and they know how to work hard. So make sure you know how to enjoy what you're doing, but also make sure you know how to get down to business and you know how to really know every single corner of your business as well and just really have a hard working attitude. You can't really give up at all. So that's how you gotta stay in there and survive. Fantastic. And last but certainly not least, uh, I believe you have an announcement. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, go so, for it. On June 9th, I'm opening my first shop in Athens. And so I've really been waiting for this, working, doing all these different types of events, just raising awareness, you could say just to get the shop open. And now it's finally coming to light. It's on June 9th and it's my birthday. So I'm happy for that birthday present. It's kind of really ironic, you know, since I started my business on my birthday and getting a shop as well. So I'm really happy for that. And it's going to start at 2 p.m. for anyone who's coming. I hope y'all really enjoy and be ready to get some ice cream. So for people that want to find out more about you or want to visit your store, uh, where can they find you? So you can find me on my website, www.littleicecreamdude.com, and on my Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Little Ice Cream Dude. And my shop is located in Athens. It's on 1040 Gaines School Road in Athens, Georgia. Bo, thank you so much. It was such an honor to have you on the show. I know it's been a long time coming, and uh, thank you so much. I, I'm really looking forward to seeing you grow and just 
what an amazing uh, m young man you're growing into. So congratulations on all your success and keep building your empire. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching the show. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and the bell so you'll get a notification next time we upload an awesome episode. Be sure to also check out our website at junioritytv.com. You can also find us on social media at junioritytv. Until next time, lots of love.